Welcome to the 2021 budget presentation of the Columbia Heights Fire Department. <clears throat> is the fire budget. Under personal services for 2021, which would be regular employees, part-time and other, overtime regular, this line item or these line items all reflect a 3% increase. Um, fire pay and training pay reflect a slightly higher increase due to the hiring of the additional paid on call firefighters in 2020. We hired eight additional paid on call firefighters. Under the supply line item, uniforms and personal protective equipment costs also show uh, an increase to accommodate the new paid on call staff as well. Other service charges um, there is a slight increase to out-of-town travel costs in hopes that we can get back to the out-of-the-area emergency management training at the various locations that we have so we can get the skill set of the staff brushed up. So under the property maintenance division 42300, um, there was actually a approximately a 6% reduction from the adopted 2020 budget. The largest reduction is a direct reflection of the wage scale on which new inspectors begin. So their, their scale where they began in January of 2020 was significantly below that of those the previous year. This resulted in a decrease. The second largest reduction is due to uh, new calculations of percentages that were allocated to the program from each department position. For example, my position as the chief, we reanalyzed it and instead of being dedicated 25% uh, or whatever we were, we decided that 10% um, services dedicated to the property maintenance was more accurate. Now under supplies and other service charges, there were absolutely no changes from the 2020 budget. So 2021 will be uh, identical to 2020. The biggest item in the fire budget for 2021 will fall under the capital equipment replacement. We are proposing the purchase of a new engine for 2021. This vehicle will replace the current first out engine. So our current fleet includes a 1996 general safety engine and a 2015 Rosenbauer, Rosenbauer 1500 gallon a minute engine. Um, these trucks are actually very specifically considered commercial engines. <clears throat> We're proposing to purchase a custom fire truck, not necessarily to replace anything, but to add to the fleet. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, the cost, the truck committee, which I've established in would be myself, the chief, and two of the logistics people, uh, the captain and the firefighter on the fire department. We've been working together to estimate um, costs for the new engine and also put the specs together, the specifications. We're estimating a cost, and, and I want to emphasize estimating because we're, we're still in the midst of, of this, but it's, it's a pretty, I believe, a fairly accurate reflection. We're right at about 640000 Well, some considerations. It's really my intent to keep the oldest engine, the 1996 General Safety. Uh, we need a reserve engine uh, for two reasons. Um, number one, the reserve engine is going to give us additional points when we go through an ISO audit. The ISO, or Insurance Service Organization Audit, analyzes where we're at um, in terms of a condition of readiness. It also analyzes how we can apply water and, and it gives us additional points for a reserve engine. Um, that is one of the reasons. Another one of the valuable reasons for this is going to be we need the additional engine to get firefighters from the station to the scene and back to the station. Transportation is a big deal and utilizing the truck um, they're, they're two major deals. And uh, 
based on over the years that have transpired in the in the uh, Columbia Heights Fire Department, we've we've reduced our engine capacity, and I I, I highly highly recommend we consider that and we keep two very good um, first out engines and a reserve engine. So this photo shows a commercial fire truck and I thought it very important to talk to the council and uh, anybody that had the interest here on what the differences are. They're very, very different pieces of apparatus. Um, as you see, this is a commercial truck and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what those, what the commercial versus the custom means. So the commercial chassis, which you've just seen in the previous slide, it was originally designed for over the road use, typically for hauling of goods, um, so much like a semi truck. That's pretty much the basic design of those. One of the advantages of a commercial chassis is it is typically much less expensive to purchase and manufacture into a fire truck. Another positive for the commercial chassis is they're built in mass quantities. So they are typically ready, readily available to purchase. And the build time can be much less, depending on how you put it together. Um, the dis disadvantage of this type of, of commercial chassis is uh, manufacturers have to install wiring and plumbing which are basically on par with today's technology. They're really jamming these things in the areas of the truck which were never originally designed for them to be placed. So if you kind of vision that and, and uh, understand how they have to do that, it, 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 uh, it compromises, in my opinion, the truck itself. The commercial fire truck chassis are also very limited in options and flexibility when we build them. So if you look in the back of a commercial versus a, a custom, the seating is very crowded. Well, it's crowded because the original design of that truck was designed to go down the road. So customization becomes very complex and it adds to the overall expense depending on what you're doing to it. The commercial fire truck offer limited safety equipment like side roll protection, which is very big on the custom trucks airbags for front and rear passengers, um, full ABS or analog brake systems with quick distance stopping. Now comparing a commercial engine to a custom engine, um, the design of the custom engines, they design the brakes based on the size, the weight of the axle, and a full out 60 to zero stopping ability. And the customs are very, very equivalent to a SUV in terms of stopping distance, which is a big deal in our business. Those trucks are very heavy. The lifespan of these types of trucks are typically much less than that of a custom chassis, especially if you consider the climate that we have these in. With the salt and the exposure to some of the um, wires and things that they run that really weren't designed to be there, uh, most of these commercial uh, chassis last about 15 years. Now what we have here is a custom fire truck. You clearly see the difference in this truck versus the other. Now there's a multitude of things that are different. Number one, look at the cab, look at the compartmentation. The pump layout is laid out very well. There's typically a generator above it, and if you see, uh, if you look above that, we always usually have some kind of a, a high volume water monitor or water supply with uh, speed lays next to it to the left. The compartmentations are very well organized, and each compartment is designed for specifically for whatever city puts them together and how they how they design that compartment. So we know going in the design phase. We know exactly what we're going to put to get to in each compartment. So therefore, the engineer designs those compartments specifically for this. Some of those things can take place on a conventional uh, type chassis, not to this degree. Uh, the other big plus here is if you look at the size of that cab, we fit four in the back extremely comfortably. And I'm not saying that um, we build these things for comfort. But we have room when we're going down the road and we're putting all of our work-related gear on, prepping for whatever we're going to. 
Again, these custom trucks, they're built for firefighting, nothing else. They're designed very specifically for each city's fire department that purchased them. The trucks have a tendency to outlast commercial fire trucks by many years. That's simply because of the design and the way they build them. Custom fire trucks have all the wiring and plumbing engineered into the design of the truck. These items are enclosed and designed when placed into the truck. Nothing is exposed to the elements, and this is clearly by design. Longevity. The suspension and safety devices placed in the custom fire truck, they, they can't be built into, or it's very difficult, I shouldn't say can't, but uh, it's, it's very difficult and it's uh, cost prohibitive to put them into the conventional truck. The braking designs, again, they're built with consideration of the final weight of the truck. So th this is all calculated during the build and design phase and are incorporated into the final product. Custom fire trucks have built-in safety devices like front impact airbags. They have side roll protection. If, if we get hit on the side and these things roll, because of all the equipment and such that we have in there, it's, it's a big exposure for the firefighters. So we have the side air, uh, roll airbag protection, seat belt notification, which is very uh, handy for the officer. They can see who's belted and who's not. And our policy is we don't roll the truck until everybody's belted. There's command centers that give specific details of every piece of operating equipment on the truck. So uh, they'll actually flag us if there is some kind of issue with the truck. So getting into the specification piece, uh, putting these specs together for a custom fire truck, it takes a lot longer than it does for the conventional because we're simply building it from the axle. We're looking at the brake systems and types. Um, we're calculating in the size of pumps. We calculate into the, uh, the size of water that tanks that we wanna put on there, what type of equipment we wanna put how long we make the truck to accommodate the equipment, the equipment and hose needs. Um, all these things put together, it, it's very typical to take close to one year to uh, not only to put the specs together, but once the, the typical build time of a custom, once they're ordered, it, it's very close to a year. Custom fire trucks tend to cost a little more. They do cost a little more, but if you're comparing an apple to an apple and you put some of the things that you put on a custom, um, some of them you simply can't on a conventional, the cost ratio isn't that significant. Now again, it's all dependent on the specifics of each truck, what the department and city chooses to need for each truck and the model that they opt to choose for the purchase. So with that, I would open it up for any questions, comments, or concerns that the, uh, the city council may have. Thank you.